Okay, hi everyone and welcome to the next video. So uh, I mentioned this yesterday on Twitter that I will be making a, kind of a trade breakdown about the curve short that I took this week. It's been overall quite a slow week, so I figured out, you know, there's not much to do today anyway. So I will just quickly record this one. Uh, before we jump into the video, uh, as always, tradingradio.com if you head to the website there is a bunch of blogs uh this one i posted in generally covers a lot of concepts that i will be talking about today but you know i highly recommend you to read other blog posts as well as they kind of include the things that i use in my trading if you want to learn how i trade in more in detail get access to weekly updates discord and uh some other stuff uh, you can pick up the trading route bootcamp also if you would like to support the free content you can sign up with a link uh, for bybit in the description where you can you know trade uh, crypto derivatives without the kyc i'm actually thinking about making some sort of a uh, reward system for people that will use the, the bybit link so it's not just kind of this like one way thing that you will you will you know sign up and i will get some sort of commissions from your trades and you know uh, so i will i will be probably introducing some 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 something in the future for the people that will actually use the uh the link for a buy bit so if you if you use that save your uid or what, whatever that's called and just keep up with the content and i will be announcing that soon anyway uh, curve was a uh, nice short this week. I was basically looking for for some fresh shorts because obviously your kind of best entries were mostly last week. So this week most of the things are just kind of slowly bleeding down. Uh, but curve ended up in my in my kind of radar uh, at the beginning of the week, and you can see on this chart on the right if I will actually overlay price here as well. You can see that throughout the Monday, uh, we started slowly kind of pushing to the upside with the high increase of the open interest, high increase in the volume, uh, especially here then. So this is just very simple kind of a uh, tool that I, I've been using to to find a, a lot of trading opportunities. I'm, I'm looking at some other things, but the open interest is one of the they're kind of easier ones. And I made a video on the YouTube here as well, where I, you know, mentioned how to how to trade squeezes with the open interest. Um, but anytime you have some sort of unusual change in the OI, which this is the green line right here, you can see that basically within few hours we went from 52 to 58 million in open interest which is you know over 10 percent of increase this is quite a significant change in short period of time making me immediately kind of interested in seeing if there is any trade to take or not so once i see uh these type of things you can see it here uh, on the coin allies chart, chart as well this is a large open increase then we had another one here as well um I'm, I'm basically looking at the charts, uh, trying to find any kind of possible entry. So for that, I always start on a daily time frame. Uh, if you have watched the video uh, I posted earlier in the week about the composite volume profile, this is one of the things that I, I will always look at first to kind of understand in what, what type of environment are we uh, currently trading. So first of all, looking at this curve chart, you can see that basically even though we had this kind of a trending move uh, at the beginning of the week and this is a little bit of a flush here when I move the cursor once again my complaint towards the trading view for hopefully they will change that um, is that basically we are in this kind of a huge range we are in this huge high volume node we were in a huge high volume node here when price was more so kind of ranging and you know ranging here ranging there ranging there uh, and a little bit on the left as well so your kind of real and only trending move basically happened within within this low volume note area right here okay you can see that it's this move right here this move right there and this move right there this is for me i know a lot of people are kind of looking at trends from a little different perspective you know looking at basically every time market is making higher highs and higher lows it's it's immediately a trending move for me uh really the trending moves happen only in these kind of shorter periods of the low volumes where market doesn't really have any sort of support or resistance in kind of a immediate proximity to to stop through so 
we break through, throughout this low volume node at the beginning of the year and then we basically uh this was uh, around the time when the bitcoin topped out as well we tried to break outside of this upper edge of the volumes you know if this would happen once again i would be then talking about the more kind of a trending move to fill because as you can see above above you there is not much of a volume to kind of go through so but we right here we tried to actually break to the upside and failed so what is telling what this is telling me is that market is back into this more of a rotational environment and um you know my first level where i would be looking for any kind of support would be around this area and uh especially especially since we start to break these kind of a lower nodes uh, if you really want to go into the detail this these these will act as your kind of sr levels on the way down but you can see all this you know you don't really need to use the volume profile in this kind of a too detailed um uh, too detailed and too zoomed in approach once you establish that the market is inside this kind of a ranging environment all you have to then do is kind of look at your sr levels uh especially on the daily time frames as they will act as a uh kind of support on resistance very simple especially with these altcoins this is something that i mentioned previously it's a largely retail driven market therefore you know this will this will always this will always be significant and you don't really need to uh over complicate things so start of the week it's right here these three uh three candles to the upside and you can already see that basically you have a nice level of sr you broke a little under this uh but then you know we failed to kind of hold this on the bounce made a new low and what i also do like here is that we made this little bit of excess this is kind of my personal thing that i'm using in my trading but as you can see you know we made a swing high traded above it and failed so this for me is kind of a finished finished type of auction where uh i don't see many reasons for the market if it's bearish you know to actually trade uh above the highs right here because so sometimes you know you will have um a level of sr which looks something like this this is not the best drawing let me change this you'll have level of sr that looks like this with these kind of a compressing uh highs to the to the downside meaning there was not this kind of a overshoot before the sell happened with cases like these you know you'll often find something like this to happen but when you have a structure that is looking more like this then i don't see many reasons to trade the swing point again basically so this is just a little bit of a price action nuance that i like to look at anyway uh i have my level on the daily chart you know this is this is and this is also one of the things that i would like to put a little bit of emphasis on is that um when you see any order flow pickups like this for example because you can see that here on the 30 minute chart and i will most likely just move to coinalize from on i will also show this to you on the exo charts in a second um let me i got signed out so that's unfortunate give me a second i will sign in again on the other screen uh not sure why this happened okay i'm back in anyway um one of the things that i would like to kind of put emphasis on is that if you are using order flow and it doesn't have to be just the open interest you it can be you know cumulative volume delta it can be footprint charts or whatever uh i don't trade these you know blindly like for example right here you can see that there is this large pickup in the open interest this doesn't mean that i will immediately go short because uh i have this overall kind of bigger level above the price as you can see i will just kind of mark this out like this uh this is my this is basically the, the area where i would like to go short if you once again take a look at the lower time frames something that i mentioned a second ago is that although we have this excess on the higher time frames you know on the daily chart you can see that there is a there is this kind of wick uh above the previous swing point before the sell-off if i'm going to take a look at the 30 minute chart it's not really happening here if i if i would sell the market here blindly you know if i would just use the limit order um there is this kind of a downside drift that 
is not doing this this type of overshoot price action that I would like to see because of that you know if I would be just selling this level blindly I would have to put my stop all the way up here because this is this would be my then my invalidation for the trade and since uh, I like to keep these trades very kind of short-lived because obviously there is a plenty of opportunities in altcoins almost every day so I'm never really trying to catch any any kind of huge home runs let me just refresh this really quickly uh okay this, this got um deleted as i mentioned you know when i when i trade altcoins i'm not really trying to catch like a huge winners uh there are plenty of opportunities almost every day so i i'm taking you know two three r trades uh and just take my money and move to the to the next thing basically very quickly so for me this this trade by itself like like this with the daily invalidation doesn't really make much sense it's 1.3 r it's not bad but i'm i know that i can get a little more tight uh, with my stop loss and my overall positioning so as you can see we made this first push and there is not a any real kind of breakdown coming uh through the level you know we push to the upside immediately start grinding up so no reason for me to short here and then we have this second push to the upside once again a huge pickup in the open interest you can also see on a cumulative volume delta uh this gray chart this is a um stablecoin perpetual swap contract so it's mostly perhaps chasing the market which is which is always kind of a great sign if you want to short something and we have this push into this zone we have a huge spike in volume you know this is really really unusual it's the same amount of volume as we had on this flush to the downside uh, just a couple of days ago uh, and this is now happening into the resistance and into the area where i want to short things uh, the last kind of a piece of uh, confluence that i can be using for trades like this is if i'm going to open the uh, footprint chart this is on exo charts if you if you don't know exo charts now is offering the binance data i, I don't know if it's on beta i think still so you need to download that for from the discord um, you can see that we have this large amount of buying coming into the level and then this 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 candle right here which is uh, obviously on the 30 minute chart is this rejection candle right here is going to close with a long wick and you have a buyers uh stuck in the upside okay you have a this is the open interest open interest is going up so this is a predominantly buying that is this is not like a stop hunt or you know where people just puke into the highs this is from large perspective this is a uh, new buyers trying to step in you know buy above basically uh, and force force kind of the, the the breakout trade and you can see you have one 1.1 million delta uh, these are more likely stops because you have zero here this is uh, towards the end of these weeks it's usually stops but in the middle these kind of larger buy blocks will be uh, usually new buyers really trying to chase the breakout and when Things like these happen, uh, you know, this is where I'm immediately uh, interested in trading. So what I then tend to do is just wait for, for something to start to break, for market to show weakness, which in this case, uh, basically you can see that uh, once again, we have this previous level of resistance, you know, coming back to very simple things, uh, you know, a lot of people tend to kind of think that I do something uh, <laughs> extremely complicated all the time but in general you know I'm just using very simple SR paired with I think with my execution somewhere in around this area and close here it was like 2.7 R trade okay nothing nothing too insane like I said I don't go for huge winners you know and I don't think it's a smart idea to to try to run every trade for you know next 5x 10x you will have much bigger success uh, when you will just keep things rather quick you know this trade actually took a uh, little over one day for for me to play out and played out very nicely so uh this actually can bring a question because obviously the market is weak everything went down uh why did why would i actually just do this when you know it when everything is correlated and everything is going down in my opinion you know even when things are very one-sided and market is very one-sided you still 
must be uh, trading things when you have some sort of underlying reason for the trades not just you know everything looks weak everything will go short and if you take a look for example for on BTC uh, we had this kind of sell-off uh, yesterday in the evening but throughout the whole day when the curve was selling down this was very much flat you know eat kind of same thing you know you can see that there is nothing in both Bitcoin and ETH which would give me this kind of a idea that one side is is very trying very hard to achieve something and markets should just roll over based on that so uh, I know that crypto is highly correlated but you will have these nuances throughout the different coins and you should always always kind of just don't trying to trade everything because everything looks a certain way but really really uh, spend your time look for the best opportunities where you have like a clearest edge and when you can you know execute uh, the trades with with really uh, high confidence that these things are about to play out your way so thank you guys for watching the video i try to make this as quick as possible as i mentioned tradingrad.com make sure to read the blog especially this one if you didn't understand many things that i mentioned if you want to learn how i trade you can pick up the trading Rad bootcamp and if you want to support a free content you can sign up with a link on of uh, on bybit in the description okay thanks and i will see you in the next one